I wanted to brighten up this dark kitchen, but getting rid of the countertops completely and changing them to marble was just too expensive. The existing countertops were in great condition, granite, they just weren't what I wanted for the look of this kitchen anymore. First, I cleaned the countertops several times, making sure to get rid of any dust or debris. After everything was clean, I just lightly sanded the surface of the countertops using a little piece of sandpaper that came in the kit. I then covered up the area so that I could protect the cabinets. I also protected the backsplash a bit, but to be honest, I'm going to change out this backsplash so I really wasn't too worried about it. So here I was, ready to start. I mixed up the paint and the activator, poured it into my tray, and started brushing it on. I brushed it along the backsplash and into the crevices, and then I used a roller to get it on the main surface of the countertop. This first coat didn't give great coverage, but I didn't expect it to. I was just getting the surface level stuff done and trying not to get any streaks or bubbles. Once that dried, I added a second coat. That might be enough for some applications, but since my countertop was black, I still had some color coming through, so I added a third coat, and that gave it the coverage that I wanted. The next step was to start painting on the veins of the marble. I used a couple of small paintbrushes that came in my kit, and I had washed the paintbrush that I had used for the white paint so that I could reuse it here again. I painted lines kind of haphazardly onto the countertop, the only thing I made sure to do was to have them going more or less in the same direction. After that, I added some water from the spray bottle, and I softened up the line using the paintbrush, and also using a paper towel in some cases. I really wanted to kind of dull it a little bit. I didn't want really distinct lines, because that's not the way that natural marble looks. I continued softening it until it achieved the look that I was going for. Once I was happy with it, my next step was to prep the epoxy. This involved mixing two solutions together and stirring it for two minutes. Since the epoxy may run off of the countertop, it was important to add tape to catch any epoxy that might drip over the sides. Pouring the epoxy on was easy, and then I just spread it using a little spreader that was included in my kit. I let it sit for several hours, and it started to shine and look great right away. You can see how the epoxy flows off of the countertop and onto the edges of the tape, so I'm really glad I had that there. Otherwise, I would have had a big mess to clean up off of the floor. A couple of hours after everything was dry, I simply removed the tape. I thought my countertops looked amazing. They looked completely natural, and they lightened up the kitchen so very much. I love the way this project turned out. I hope this inspires you to try a faux marble project. After updating this 1980s kitchen, I knew it needed something more. I wanted to add backsplash, but I didn't want it to take long or create a mess on my new countertops. So I decided to use an adhesive tile mat along with mosaic tile sheets, white grout, and a sponge so that I could complete this project start to finish in just one day. The adhesive mat comes on a roll and I found that it was best to hold the roll essentially up against the bottom of the cabinet and allow gravity to help it hang down straight. Try to position it properly the first time. When it came to the outlets, I made sure the power was off and I simply cut the mat with a razor blade so that I could create an opening around the outlet and disposal switch area. It took me only about half an hour to get the entire backsplash area on this small kitchen done. When I was ready to place the tile, I removed the white cover sheet. My tiles were 12 inches and the mat's 12 inches, but in order to properly place a tile, I didn't just remove one sheet, I removed two. This way I would have a bit of a larger sticky surface area and also not risk pulling up my tile when removing the next adhesive cover sheet. You can use spacers when installing the tile sheets, but I felt comfortable working without them. The work progressed pretty easily, and I was lucky that, at the first corner, the tiles ended in just the right spot. But when I got to the second corner, I wasn't quite so fortunate. I needed just a little bit more tile to get to the end. So I measured the distance, and then I measured and marked it on the back of the tile sheet. My husband was helping me out at the tile saw while I was doing the installation, and he went ahead and cut right down the tile mosaic sheet for me. I loved how the other end of the tile sheet turned out. It had that great cut and I was able to just stick that in place along the other corner wall and the tile looked like it professionally made itself around the corner without any break in the pattern. Super satisfying. When I got to the outlet and light switch area, I was able to press the tile into place just very lightly and then cut away the tile. I made sure only to cut the mosaic tile netting and not cut the adhesive on the wall. After all, I needed the adhesive to stay there because I was going to cut the tile down to size and install them there so that they could go around the opening. The great thing about this project is that there's no downtime, so I was ready to grout already. You should use a grout float to add the grout, but I'll be honest, I find it so difficult to maneuver a grout float. I cheated. 
I used a plastic putty knife to help me get the grout into the tile and into the crevices. It is not the traditionally recommended way to add grout, but I'm being transparent and letting you know that this is what worked for me because I felt like I could really get the grout into the spaces really well. I added the grout and then went over it with a damp sponge to get the grout residue off of the tile surface. I rinsed and repeated the cleaning with the damp sponge several times. I added the outlet covers, my decor items, and then I was done. It was a really quick and easy project, and I think the kitchen really changed as a result. I love the way it looks. I was shocked to see how the stove now looks glaringly almond, whereas before, when everything around it was yellow and brown, it looked white. I hope this inspired you to try a DIY tile backsplash project of your own. Today, I'll show you how $35 in tile can transform your bathroom, and it's not in the way you think. I had seen this hexagonal mosaic tile that I really loved, so I bought several sheets and got to work with it. I removed the tiles from the mosaic tile backing sheet. The reason I removed them instead of using them on the sheet as they are is that the sheet itself has spacing on there where grout would normally go. But I definitely don't want to put any grout on this project. I just want to put the tiles right up next to each other and have them create one solid design. I added liquid nails to the backs of the tiles and started mounting them to the mirror. I first created one row along the bottom and didn't worry about the mirror clips. I used flat mirror clips and I worked right over top of them. I just added a little bit more liquid nails to the pieces that were going over the clips so that they would grip well. Then I added a second row of tiles and after that I started working my way up the sides of the mirror. I did get a little bit of slippage of the tiles and when I did, I started adding tape as needed. I also alternated between working on the left side or right side just to give a chance for the liquid nails to dry a bit. It took me about 45 minutes to get the tiles done all the way around the mirror. The next day, I removed the tape and I love the way it's starting to look. However, there are a few things that still need to be done. There's some liquid nails that I accidentally got onto the front of some of the tiles, so I needed to remove that so that the tiles would look good. I used mineral spirits on a paper towel, which did remove the liquid nail, but it then started leaving behind all of this paper towel residue, so I don't recommend that. I had to switch to like a lint-free cloth, and that worked a lot better. So I purchased some black caulking. I added it along the edges. I know this looks like a huge mess at first, but just go with me here. After I added the caulking, I wiped it away using the lint-free cloth with the mineral spirits. That was pretty much it. It was a quick and easy project that took me a couple of hours one night and a couple of hours the next day and made a huge transformation in this bathroom for a total of only $44. I hope this inspired you to buy your favorite mosaic tile and add it to your mirror and spruce up your bathroom a bit. Thanks for watching Home Talk and see you next time.